Hello everyone, let's talk about making wall art online with Blurb. For the sake of this demo, I'm using my desktop computer, but you can also access the online tool I'm about to show you on your mobile device and make wall art from the photos you've stored on your phone. Whether you're on your phone or your computer, you just need to go to blurb.com slash custom dash wall dash art, which you can find on the Blurb website by selecting the products tab and then clicking on wall art. Once you're on that page, you can just hit the get started button. So. There's a couple of ways I can get images into my wall art area, and one is I can just simply drag and drop it from the desktop, or I can hit the select image button, and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to hit select, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do two examples of the same image, and the first one is a low resolution, and the second one is a high resolution, and I'm doing this for a very specific reason, okay? So I'm going to start with selecting the small, the low resolution image, and bring it in. So what happens is when your image comes into to the wall art creator, you'll see that it will default to a specific size and that default is based on the resolution of your image and you can see that my image looks very blurry pixelated and low resolution so it's defaulted to the smallest size but what I want to bring your attention to is right here on the right which is this warning button and if I see this warning and I click on it it says hey you've got a low resolution image and if you try to print this it may appear blurry when printed and I can also hit this learn more button if I need a little bit more information so let's start over. Let me go back. I'm going to go to my image tab here on the left. And as you'll see, we have image, we have material and size. If I click on image, it says, here's the current image that I have. It says change image. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I'm going to go to the full size, full resolution version of that image. And now watch what happens. When that image imports in, you see how crisp and clear that is. And it also defaults to a 20 by 30 size. So it's telling me the resolution of your image is so high that you could easily do a 20 by 30 portrait. So I may or may not do that. We're going to talk about size in a minute, but that's where you would find that. So that's the image tab over here. I don't have that warning label anymore. Everything looks good. So let's go to material. That's our second tab. And as you'll see, I have three options. I have canvas, I have acrylic, and I have metal. So let's say I have canvas selected, but I, I need a little bit more information. You'll see right here, there is a green info button. And if I click on that, it brings up all three objects that I can get, canvas, acrylic, and metal, and gives me a little bit more detail about what each of these is made of, how it's comprised, etc. So that's where that information is going to be. So let's say material, I'm going to, I'll do acrylic. Okay, so I've got a 20 by 30 acrylic portrait, there's my image, and the next thing I want to talk about is right here, it's called edit image. And if I click on this, it brings up an entire editing suite in regards to my, to my piece of artwork. Let's just work across these from left to right, top to bottom. So the first thing is the crop option, which means I can crop this image any way I like. I've also got a set of filters. And for those of you who use uh, apps on your mobile phone, these will look very familiar. These are different ways of tweaking the image to slight degrees, chrome, fade, mono, etc. I've also got colors, and this is where I can adjust brightness, contrast, exposure, saturation, etc. And the last tab is really interesting. The last tab is markup. And this allows me to do a variety of interesting things to my image. So for example, I can draw on this. So I can go here and I can draw whatever I want. I can also add an arrow. If there was something I was trying to highlight and needed to point to it, I can add an arrow. I can add a box of text if I needed to write, or I can add shapes. I can add a square, a circle, et cetera. There's, so there's a lot you can do to your wall art image. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this hit cancel and go back. So we've talked about image, we've talked about material, we've talked about the information button, the edit image down here, and the last thing is the size. So when you go to the size option, you'll see at the bottom, you can flip your image from landscape to portrait just to see how it would look in a different orientation. And every time you change size by clicking on a different size, you'll, you'll notice the price beneath it, but it also it is represented over here. And this is a handy little schematic about how that print size will work in relation to other things that you might find in your home or office. I find this very helpful in terms of figuring out, determining what size I think is best. So I've got eight by 10 here, that looks a little small. 1114 looks a little small. 1620 looks about perfect to me. We've gone through this whole range of options. I've edited the image, I have it exactly where I want. And all I've got to do is hit add to cart. So once I've hit add to cart and my image is being uploaded, I just wanted to remind new customers that you'll be asked to create a Blurb account, at which point you'll start to receive special offers and creative inspiration, photography tips, etc. So once I've hit add to cart, my image is uploaded, it lands here on Blurb and I am ready for checkout. And that is how you make wall art online.